Hi, I'm Katie, and this is my house. I bought it about a year ago, and I bought it knowing it needed a lot of work, especially on the outside. It either needed all new siding or needed a ton of restoration. Uh, there was a lot of paint chipping, peeling, and trim work was rotting. So this summer I was laid off because of COVID-19 and I decided I should work on the house to make good use of my time. I talked about doing vinyl siding, but I really didn't like the idea of losing the really cool trim work that makes this house special. Uh, it's a craftsman style home with beautiful woodwork. And so I wanted to restore it and do it the right way. I couldn't let myself um, not do it the right way and make it last. So sanding, scraping, and pressure washing. Uh, I started with scraping, but it was taking super long. Um, so I had decided to pull out the pressure washer uh, and that helped, but wasn't the solution. It was starting to cause damage to the wood because it was too much pressure and it was starting to rip the wood fibers apart. So I decided that I couldn't pressure wash it. It was causing too much damage. So hand scraping it is. This scraper works pretty good. I wouldn't recommend it for a large project. As you can see, it would take forever. My dad ended up recommending a nicer scraper to me that we'll see in a little bit. That's me. Uh, I don't really like filming myself up close, so you're not going to see a whole lot of me in this. And that's my boyfriend, Cole. Uh, he was a huge help during this and would drive down on the weekends to help and actually took a week off of work to come down and help. So huge shout out and thank you to him. I couldn't have done it without him. Um, those white circles you see are plugs from the insulation. Uh, the prep work was about 80% of the job, whereas painting and priming took about 20%. I have no clue how much time I spent on this. I don't even wanna know. There's that scraper. It is a carbon fiber blade, and we went through quite a few blades, but thanks, Dad, for the recommendation. It worked great. I'm pretty sure my neighbors think I'm crazy. I was regularly out there shop vacuuming my yard, uh, trying to collect all of those paint chips and dispose of them properly. I also used turps and bed sheets and everything I could. The sander that I got is a cheap sander from Menards. I figured putting this many hours on a sander, I might as well just get one that's kind of disposable. Uh, and the sandpaper was all 60 or 80 grit. The 3M sandpaper was definitely the best, but it was super expensive. So I just got cheap stuff off of Menards, or excuse me, Amazon, and just changed up my pad more, more often. It started raining that day. <laughs> uh, if you watch closely, you'll see me run in front of the camera. Um, those ladders are orchard ladders. They're more stable than a typical ladder. They were super helpful. Having three tripod legs. That section where I'm working on right there had the most damage as far as siding goes. Um, Cole ended up replacing every single nail because a lot of it was rusted completely off and a few of the boards were just barely hanging on. Uh, and if we would have waited any longer, the siding would have fallen off the house. So he tightened all of that up. Uh, that's the cherry picker. Huge help for the front of the house, not having to work on a super tall ladder and having all your tools up there in the basket. Um, I didn't really film this 100% in order. Uh, we'd work on whatever side of the house was in the shade on the hot days. Some days it was over 105 degrees. Uh, that's the wood filler that we use to fix any cracks, crevices, uh, nail holes, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we also use caulk in some of them. Uh, that's the caulk that we used. It's a 30 year caulk. Uh, we also caulk trim and windows with that to help seal everything up, as well as those plug holes that we talked about before from the insulation, just making sure everything's completely sealed. Uh, the front of the house had a lot of water damage. A lot of the trim was rotten, and there was water. Whenever it rained really hard, water would come inside the house, 
Um, so repaired all of that before we sealed it back up, um, making sure everything was buttoned up. Um, this saw is super handy. It is a 20 volt DeWalt miter saw. I only have one exterior outlet on the house, so we would fight over the extension cord uh, because I needed one for sanding and he needed one for the saws. So it's helpful having the saw battery powered to do all of those miter cuts. Cole replaced a lot of the trim. Um, this is a table saw that we bought at a garage sale down the road. Super cheap, so thank you neighbors. We got really good use out of that saw. Uh, here Colt is fitting that drip edge and you can see that he had a pilot hole in that piece of wood. Um, that prevents the wood from cracking when you put that nail down through. And cracking just means that you're inviting water in which means that you're going to have rot and that was the whole purpose of this. The primer that we chose is an oil-based primer. It takes a little bit more work for cleanup with paint in there, but it's supposed to have better bond to the paint. Um, we used a coffee can with paint thinner in it to leave the paintbrush in overnight so that I could reuse the paintbrushes at down a cost. So excited to finally have that prep work done on that side of the house and start priming. It was nice just having it white. Uh, it was cute. We went for a drive around the block so we could see the house. It was white. <laughs> and it was an improvement. Um, people were stopping by on the sidewalk to say it looked nice. Like, it's just a primer. You gotta wait for paint. They thought that was the paint color. You can see those white plugs from the insulation. We caulked all those shut as there was a lot of shrinkage. Made sure everything was buttoned up nice and tight before we primed, sealing out any moisture or bugs. Hopefully this paint will last for many, many years. Uh, it definitely took a lot of work, but I wanted to do it the right way. long time. This house has made it a hundred years, so I don't see why I can't make it another hundred. It was built really, really well. Um, those black windows that you see up top there, we're going to restore those next summer. Um, take them out of their frames and paint them black again. This day we finally got to do paint. Uh, you know, it's just white trim paint. <laughs> Cole was sicker than a dog. Uh, he did go get tested for COVID and it came back negative, but I let him sleep in and then he came out and kept me company, but he was too sick to help. Uh, we finally got to start paint. Uh, that is a Dober Gray by Pittsburgh. I really like how the paint color turned out. I feel like it's fitting for the age of the home. I didn't want to do anything too modern. But I also wanted to make sure that that trim popped because that was the whole point of this. So, um, the windows down below, the porch was enclosed, I think, in the 60s. And so I'm going to leave those windows white. I think they would look, they're not as cool of a window. Uh, they're cheap windows from the 60s. So, um, and then the screen door or that storm door, I think I'm going to get a new one and black. I want to make sure that it stays classic looking to fit the craftsman style of this home. Uh, and next summer I need to finish the second coat of gray paint. I just ran out of time this fall. So if you guys have any questions or comments, this is what it looks like now. Uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Um, thank you for watching. 